Hear me clearly. America is not a racist country. You need to address. Well, first of all, no, I don't think America is a racist country. I'm just trying to go to Planet Fitness, man. Okay. I'm just trying to go to Planet Fitness. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Dude, what is the way to Planet Fitness? I know. What's your name? My name is Jason. Jason? Yeah. Jason, do you mind just putting that? Because I don't know what's in your hand right now. Look, it's my t-shirt and my hat. You probably see me take it off right now. Okay. Is there any wrong information? No, anything? nothing. So have you been arrested or anything like that? I've been arrested before, but that's years ago. It has nothing to do with my, my life now. Okay. Yeah. Where, where are you living at? Where am I living? I'm from Phoenix. I'm here as an actor. An actor? Yes. Have you been in anything I would have seen? I don't know. No? I don't know. Yeah. I've auditioned for many things that I know you've seen, but I, I sign NDAs and I'm not allowed to talk no, about these no, things. No, yeah. Okay. Is there anything legal on here or anything nope. like that? No. It's okay if we make sure? There's no reason to search me. But is it okay if we make sure? There's no reason to search me. So you're saying no? I don't know. Is it against the law to say no? Because I'd rather it's you not don't. It's against the law. No, I'm saying no then. There's okay. no. The whole reason is what made you, what provoked you to stop me okay, and just question me? I told you before. I'm going to sit here and say it again and again. I'm just curious. Okay. Because right. I, like I said, I'm, I'm starting to feel like I'm being harassed by the Burbank police. And, I, and, I, and I'm not, and I'm not doing nothing wrong. Yeah, no, normally, normally it's not every day that people walk down the street and got full, full tattoo sleeves and everything. You know? So it's my tattoos. It's real. Los Angeles police and prosecutors can no longer blanket entire areas of the city with gang injunctions and must instead use them in a more targeted, deliberate way under the terms of a court settlement reached last month. The settlement resolves a class action lawsuit filed four years ago by the American Civil Liberties Union of Southern California and the Youth Justice Coalition. In the lawsuit, the groups accused the city of violating the civil rights of thousands of residents who were swept up in the gang injunctions without being given the chance to challenge their designation as gang members in court. A federal judge ruled in March 2018 that if the case proceeded to trial, it was likely that the city's process for enforcing injunctions would be struck down and barred the city from enforcing nearly all of its active injunctions. The injunctions, which are civil court orders issued by judges, are used throughout the state and were designed to make it difficult for gangs to operate by barring members from congregating with each other or associates, wearing clothes with gang colors, or engaging in other activities in neighborhoods that law enforcement considered to be a specific gang's turf. Suspected violators were typically detained by police and charged with criminal contempt. The LAPD has relied heavily on injunctions since the 1980s when street gangs began to flourish in Los Angeles. When seeking injunctions, however, city officials typically ask judges to impose them on an entire street gang or a gang's faction, rather than alleged members of the gang. After a judge approved an injunction, LAPD investigators and prosecutors from the city attorney's office would then identify individuals as gang members or associates who were subject to the injunction. In the lawsuit, lawyers for the ACLU argued that process was unconstitutional since the city did not have to meet any burden of proof before including someone in an injunction. The claims took on heightened significance as the LAPD came under fire for the way it polices gang activity in recent years. Three officers were charged with falsely labeling people as gang members earlier this year, a scandal that has forced the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office to review hundreds of cases that the officers testified in. The California Attorney General's Office also barred other law enforcement agencies from using LAPD records uploaded to the state's embattled gang database earlier this year due to concerns about the accuracy of the information LAPD had provided. It. Across the city, there are currently 46 permanent orders and joining 79 different gangs or factions. In light of the settlement, however, police are not enforcing them against any individual people, said Rob Wilcox, a spokesman for the city attorney's office. Going forward, gang injunctions can only be enforced against named defendants who have been given a chance to challenge their gang designation in court. According to the terms of the settlement, injunctions will also expire after five years. The settlement does not include any payouts by the city. Melanie Ochoa, a senior staff attorney with the ACLU who worked on the case, said the lawsuit's class was made up of an estimated 9,000 people who were subject to a gang injunction in Los Angeles without being given a chance to challenge their inclusion in court. Questions about the necessity and value of injunctions have lingered for years. There were roughly 8,900 people subject to the injunctions in 2016. 
when the ACLU filed its lawsuit. One year later, the city attorney's office released the results of an audit of its injunction rolls and found more than 7,300 people who no longer needed to be subject to the court orders. Many people were still subject to the injunctions in land, despite either moving out of the neighborhood where the orders were relevant or having long severed ties with any gangs. In some cases, dead people's names were still affixed to the injunctions. Police agencies across California have begun to move away from the use of injunctions in recent years due to a mix of public backlash or concerns about due process violations similar to those alleged in Los Angeles. While gang violence and violent crime overall in the city have fallen dramatically over the past few decades, the downward trend stalled this year as shootings and homicides surged amid the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The city had seen 335 homicides as of setting, marking a 33% increase over last year. Shootings were up nearly 40%. Officials have blamed much of that violence on gang members, who police believe have grown increasingly brazen in their willingness to open fire on groups of people, according to LAPD data through DEC. 5. Homicides that police have determined were gang-related were up 29% compared to last year. Asked about the injunction settlement, LAPD Chief Mitchell Moore said he supports the revised approach, adding that the new policy will ensure restrictions on gang members are warranted and a result of their individual conduct, and not a broad-based description of their gang lifestyle. Alright, so we were able to hear the video. Below the video, I had um, the TikTok of the guy that posted, and uh, I wanted to put it specifically up there because I don't know the actual ethnicity of the person. I've looked around on the web. Some people stated that the person is black. I don't really have proof of that, so I don't want to be mistaken. So you can clearly go to the TikTok page and, you know, figure out things directly for yourself if you would like to do that. And the other information that I gave was from an article a few years ago, and it specifically dealt with the fact that um, LA has had these types of things um, in rotation for some years, or at least since the, the 80s, as they say, this is when the gang culture really started rising in LA, right? Even though you have some gangs that are prior um, to the 80s. And I'm going to um, agree with other individuals where this law is, or, or these rules, whatever they have, are completely discriminatory because more than likely they are only for specifically black and Hispanic individuals that are in Los Angeles. I'm pretty sure out of all of the white boys that they got tatted directly out there with arm sleeves, including their own, including their own, I've showed you guys pictures of this, including their own that are part of the police force. I'm talking about these dudes come out with the short sleeve, uh, you know, dark blue shirt, and all you see is like tats on both arms. Sometimes they got like both arm sleeves, and in some instances, they might have a whole full upper body. So you'll see like part of the neck, you'll see the arms, you'll see the other arms, sometimes the hands as well. So you have these individuals who are directly out here patrolling the streets with tattoos, but they're specifically going after a specific brand or color, trying to associate every tattoo with gang activity when we already know that they have gangs within the LA police force, which is illegal, which should not be happening. And they also have their own tattoos and their own initiations that they do in order for somebody to be a part of the gang. And they're also separated by ethnicity as well. So it's funny that a gang culture is trying to police <laughs> another uh, quote unquote culture. Because I'm not going to say specifically that it's a game because I don't know who this man is. I don't know who his family is or, you know, who he's associated with. The main thing that we do know is that he was being stopped. And the lady said, the cop said that, yeah, I stopped you because of your tattoos. Well, I, you know, you're not supposed to be, you know, walking on the sidewalk. However she wanted to sit up there and word it, it was wrong. And then to further prove how wrong it was, when he basically stated, it was like, yeah, you know, I'm, you know, I've, you know, done things here and there, you know, I'm an actor, right? He's like, really? Is there anything that you've been in that I've seen, right? Because magically she couldn't believe it. Somebody with tattoos, somebody looking like you, you're actually an actor. Huh, yeah, right. Let me see if uh, you, you've been in something that I've seen because I watch everything, right? 
And then the dude was being honest, technically a little bit too honest. He was like, you know, yeah, I've been, you know, in jail before, but that was like way in the past. It has nothing to do with today. Um, you know, like I said, this is a thousand percent ridiculous. And, you know, this is the same thing that I've talked about over and over and over again. I brought this up with, um, you know, talking about both communities and referencing both communities before. And... I've stated this is the reason why people need to police their own communities. Black people need to police their own communities, right? The Hispanic population, right? The Spanish-speaking population out there, they need to police their own communities as well. Because if that was uh, the case and that was supposed to happen, this wouldn't even be a video. This wouldn't even be a story. But due to the fact that that type of policing, taking care of and looking after the community, Due to the fact that that isn't necessarily happening, this is why you have videos like this. This is why you have incidences like this. This is also a clear cut reason why the other cop was way off camera and why she was on camera, but she made sure to cover up the name of her badge. I mean, the, uh, the, the name tag that she got. If you don't believe me, go back and look at that video when she was having the uh, exchange during the conversation with him. She made sure as soon as she rolled up out of that car, she hurried up and put that arm, that left arm, directly over that name badge. She did that real quick because she knew she was being filmed. And she didn't want this being on uh, social media. Or if it was, people didn't specifically know her name and all this other type of stuff. Because more than likely, she has social media accounts. People know who it is that she is, who it is that she's related to, friends with, and all this other type of stuff. Like I said, cops, they, they know when it is that they're doing the wrong things. She knew that she was wrong for what it is that she did. They were bored. They more than likely weren't close to a lunch break. They decided not to go out there and get no donuts and no coffee or anything else. They decided to pull directly out and travel. Like, hey, we're going to stop you real quick. What you doing? Where are you going? Who are you? Who are you associated with? What are these tattoos about? Why are you walking on the sidewalk? Why do you got this whole arm sleeve? Like I said, that's crazy and intrusive. That's crazy and intrusive. And then there was another story that I ran across. It was an article, sorry. And they were talking about how uh, you would have individuals that would get arrested. And then they were made to, in a sense, um, be unclothed almost fully, depending on where the tattoo is, so that they could take a picture of the tattoo. What if that person is just visiting the state? They don't have nothing to do with nothing over there. But now you want them because you have hold of them at this moment in time. You're forcing them to do this for no reason because it has nothing to do with nothing else. And you want to take pictures of their tattoos for what? For what? Like I said, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to you know quote unquote do that and then on top of that the, the given fact that over there in cali they have like a tattoo culture they got a tattoo scene directly over there they got a lot of tattoo artists great and awesome you know and, and, and knowledgeable tattoo artists so are you going to do that to the whole you know population of cali no you're not you're not going to sit up here and do that you're going to specifically only do it to a certain group only to a certain group I wonder if you have some people from Hawaii that have like the, the tribal tattoos. I wonder if they would get stopped and how it is that they would get treated. Almost wonder. Would they try to insinuate that they're part of a gang or I would I would really love to see how that interaction would just so have to work. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this video and everything that I stated in the comment section below.